Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at OSPF sham links. Um, before we hop into the, the CLI, I just want to show you the network here. It looks complicated, it's really not. Um, I want to show you what's currently configured and what the problem is. So these, we have two customers here, red and blue, that are connected to this MPLS network. We're going to totally ignore red, so you can just forget about it. We're worrying about customer blue. Customer blue is running OSPF 79 is the uh, process number and they're connecting OSPF with the MPLS peer. Uh, there is this back door link here, but it is shut down. So we're not going to worry about that right now. I'll turn it on later and see what we get into. But for now we have two customer sites peering with MPLS. All right. So let's take a look at the configuration from the customer side. So I have router nine, just using quad zeros, router seven, quad zeros, and notice everything is in area zero. So we're not doing anything weird with areas, we're just, everything is in area zero. Now let's take a look at the routing table, show IP route OSPF. Um, sorry, I'm gonna begin at the word gate just to clean things up a little bit. And notice something interesting about these routes. They're all OIA routes, right? So that means that they are inter-area routes. They're not intra-area routes, which is kind of weird because, well, we have area zero everywhere. So you think, okay, maybe they're, you know, running OSPF, uh, maybe they're running inter-area, or sorry, intra-area, but they're not. And the reason being is that they are actually being redistributed on, redistributed on these PE routers. So the, these routers here, so we'll say router five and this XRV router, they are connected to each other with BGP, all right? BGP, and they're using BGP VPN V4 address family to share routes. They're redistributing these routes into OSPF. But the weird thing you saw was that they're not coming in as E2 routes either, right? They're coming in as OIA. And the reason this works is because RFC, and the RFC number is 4577, defines the MPLS super backbone. Uh, the super backbone, as fun of a name as, as it is, uh, allows us to have a discontiguous area zero, which is great because, you know, we have, we're using area zero here. We know that, oh, that area zero has to be contiguous, but with this RFC, it doesn't have to if we're, if we're doing MPLS. So this is great. However, they can't be O routes because these two routers don't have an OSPF neighbor relationship, so they can't flood LSAs to each other. All right, maybe not that big of a deal, but let's see what happens when I turn on this link here. So let's go into router nine. I'm gonna go in the link towards seven, and I'm gonna no shut it. So these links are also going to be in area zero. And we can see the neighbor is already up. Get some of these console messages out of the way. So let me show IP route, route again for the OSPF routes. They're still showing the OIA. Okay, so now that it's converged, we this is actually better for us because now we can see the difference really clearly. Up here, they're OIA. Down here, they are O routes. But they're coming over gig 07. So if we trace to 7777, source it from our loopback, uh, we're gonna do a numeric, and you can see it goes directly to seven. Now, the reason that this is a problem for us is because we actually wanna prefer the routes over MPLS. If you look at the cost, you can see my cost up here is three, but my cost down here is 21. So this is definitely a worse link I want to use my MPLS link that I'm paying a lot of money for. 
Um, we obviously need some way to do this, right? We need some kind of mechanism to fix this problem. And the way we do that is with sham links. So what a sham link does is the customer actually doesn't do anything. So we're not we're done with router seven and router nine. From a customer's point of view, we, we hop on the phone with our service provider and we say, hey, can you guys configure a sham link? And they take it over. So what a sham link does is it's a logical link, it's very similar to a virtual link, between the two PE routers. Um, this allows the two routers to create an OSBF neighbor relationship, which allows them to flood the LSC, sorry, the LSAs across the MPLS backbone, and then the end result is that they should be O routes. So let's take a look how to configure this. Um, by the way, this XRV router, I have already configured for it. So all we're gonna do is focus on router five. Uh, so let's take a look at router five. Let me clear that ink off the screen. So the first thing we have to do is, let me take a look at the VRFs. So I have two VRFs and um, we have VRF definition blue. That's the one we are talking about. So we want to create a loopback address in this VRF. So uh, int loopback, we'll call it 55. Um, when my console messages come up, okay. IP, sorry, actually before you put the IP address on there, you need to put in the VRF. IP address is 55, 55, 55, 55. And we're gonna do it a slash 32. Now the reason why we need this loop back is because these are gonna be the endpoints to our sham link. So remember I said how the, the two PE routers are communicating with BGP? Well, now that I have this loop back, I need to advertise it in BGP. So it, again, it's, in the, it's under the VRF, IPv4, VRF blue. We're gonna do network of all 55s, mask is 255s. All right, so now that we're sending our loop back over to the other PE router, now I can configure the sham link. So we go router OSPF 79, VRF is blue, and I do area zero sham link. And the first thing we configure is the source. So our source is here. And actually that didn't get a five in it. That's okay though. Now we do the destination, which you didn't see me configure, but on the other side, it's all 101s. And then we could hit enter here. I'm gonna configure the cost. And I'm gonna figure the cost of one. The reason I'm doing that is because we want to prefer this sh sham link over the back door link. So I wanna make sure that the cost is lower. So I'm gonna set the cost to one. And you can already see that the neighbor came up. And the neighbor came up on this OSBF SL2, uh, which is the, the sham link interface. So if I do a show IP OSBF interface brief, I could see this SL2 link, right? And it's a point to point link. If you want to do, if you want to see a show command for it, show IP OSBF sham link or sham links. And we could see the link is up and we could see who the neighbor is and, and more good information on it. So the awesome part about this now is show IP OSPF 79 neighbor is now we have this sham link neighbor along with the customer neighbor, right? So the customer is out this gigabit seven interface. If we look at router five, gig seven to the customer. And then now we have the sham link. So if we go to the customer, um, let's go to router nine because that's the one we were, we were taking a look at all this stuff on. Now we see that we have O routes that are going over gig zero zero, which was back up here before but up here they were IA, now they're O routes, right? So since the metric is lower than this 21 over the back door link, now we can use that sham link 
the traffic engineer over MPLS. Uh, the other thing you notice is that there is this OE2 route in here. Uh, that's the 55, 55, 55. If you're the provider and you don't want your customer to know about your loopbacks, just use some routing policy to get those out of there. So the moment of truth, although this is more of a formality at this point, is we can trace and you can see we're going through the MPLS backbone instead of directly over that backdoor link. So I hope this video was uh, informative. I hope you can now see the point of the sham link, what they're used for. Uh, the configuration is super simple. Um, let me scroll back up. Literally, it's just one command on under OSBF. Um, just make sure you create that loopback in the VRF of the customer. Advertise the loopback over BGP for the v VRF for the customer. And then put that sham link in there. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.